Kyle. I'm Neil Armstrong. Join me for an adventure through time. From the earliest days, flyers have been pushing to fly faster and further. They soon begin to believe that it just might be possible to fly completely around the Earth. This Douglas World Cruiser was the first to do it back in 1924. The years after the first round the world flight saw a boom in long distance records. Pilots fly with plus confidence and ocean of the next time. Flying all the way around the world and coming back to where you start is not a very practical thing to do. <laughs> we were uh, worried. Uh, our own data showed it, uh, that it was improbable that we would do it without a mechanical failure. As turbine engines became lighter, a new breed of aircraft became possible. One that could take off and land vertically, yet fly with the speed of jets. The fantail anti-torque system gives the aircraft unusual agility and maneuverability at air speeds up to 80 knots. Neil spoke with Sergei Sikorsky about the early helicopters his father designed. I remember very, very distinctly the first trainer that my father built, which was swiveled on a post. He used that to train himself on the controls of the machine. And then the first very brief hops. In their quest for increased flight efficiencies, designers looked at radical new designs. Some thought the ideal shape would be just a wing, nothing else, flying through the air. It's a very complex airplane. It's a two-man airplane. They have to operate all of the, uh, the basic airplane control as well as the, uh, the navigation and the, uh, the weapon systems. In the early days of aviation, instruments in the cockpit were simple, almost non-existent. A weighted silk stocking or scarf tied to a strut could help the pilot gauge his airspeed. That's about it. Thousands of pilots learned their instrument training in this link trainer in the 30s and 40s, and it was a challenge. Join us again next time on First Flights.